What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today, we're taking a look at Rare Games Sea of Thieves. Funny enough, Rare has been like their namesake for years now, whack a mole and out releases in various collections and connect sports titles that had many people wondering just what happened to the team that invented a giant singing pile of poo. And is that creative excellence even still here, or like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies has just sunk down deep into Davy Jones' locker, never to appear again? Let's find out and see, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Sea of Thieves, stealing your opponent's booty, e-breaking sailing ships, and washing ashore on a deserted island. Oh wait, my bad, that's the main island. And of course, as with all games like this, and especially this title, which has had so many problems staying actually working throughout the starting of it, this is just my impressions and my review of it so far, but you know what? They're asking for money, so they get a review. Graphics art first. I've always been a big fan of stylized graphics, and this is the one place where I think Sea of Thieves really hits the mark, and the cooler colors of the Caribbean styles and the designs of the locations themselves really do an excellent job playing off one another and offering a warm feeling to the entire location. Also, the lighting is incredible in this game. It doesn't matter if you're playing on Xbox One, Xbox X, or PC. The lighting system is easily one of the game's highlights. It's terrific, and it shows just what an artistic team can do when they have their mind set deep into the saccharine crystallized walls of a pirate's booty cave. For example, you can be sprinting across a moonlit cove one second or a sun-drenched beach the next, and the game's detailed lighting system means that each place is represented well without one being blown out or throwing you into jet black darkness because the game is trying to keep that comedic feel throughout. In fact, you see that in a lot of games, and here it's one of the few that handles lighting, handles it really well and with a lot of nuance. Let's talk about the waves, for example. But really, what hasn't been said about the waves? They're incredible looking and easily the best overall waves and water systems in a game. It's not only their building and changing around particular islands and the reaction your ships go through as it climbs a 10-foot swell, but also the translucent caps of each wave letting through just a hint of the day's color. It does a tremendous job making the game world feel like you're in one giant interactive cartoon that's layered perfectly. There are no discrete separate layers from each other. I mean, we've seen a lot of games based on ships and, well, water, and this is one of the first times where a lot of times when you're in deep sea, you're in the middle of a storm and lightning's crackling around you, and you end up not paying attention because you're just looking at the waves. Also, I did like the small graphical embellishments to enemies when you start fighting them. You fight the higher leveled ones, and there's just a splash of color or a bit of equipment change on them. It's also representative many times of choices you can make when you're outfitting your character, which offers this almost nostalgic feeling of the cycle of life feeding back into the design, because basically you are fighting other pirates who have died on their quests, or at least that's the way the game makes you want to think about it. Now, despite that, enemy variety really is incredibly lean here. Even with a couple special sea monsters here and there, it doesn't take an incredibly long time to look around and go, I've been here before. Sadly, on the consoles, the game is also capped at 30 FPS and at times does drop below it. While on the PC, you can easily get it locked to 60 with current gen's hardware if you have that choice. But I'll get to choice in a bit because joining up with people might be a little bit of an issue. Regardless, the entire world state's fantastic to look at, yes, but it needs far more fleshing out because pretty much it's like you're the only one who got the invite to the pirate party, and even when throwing cannonballs at opponents' heads at full speed, the moment it's over, you look around and think to yourself, is that it? Sound, music, and voice. Hello, my friend. What are you looking at? Go on, get lost. And of course, let's do sound first. Listen, there are a few things more ominous as that low-end rumble of your three master smashing into some port town ship dock at full speed and the slow gurgle of water indicating all hands need to be on board to pay all that crap out. That is done incredibly well. The ship-to-ship -ship smashing sounds, perfect. The real issue here is the leanness that continues to pervade throughout the entire production. Fighting's a couple sounds, like someone yelling ching, ching, ching into a microphone as they pretended swords hit each other. And it ends up really falling to the wayside as information for the game player. Now, that doesn't mean it's all bad, including the hand cannons that characters can get. I loved some of the gun sounds. Absolutely fine with that. While I have a number of qualms here, I think one of them isn't the wind or storm sounds either. It is absolutely epic to be flitting over the tops of massive waves in the middle of some storm, all of you trying to figure out where the island of buried shit may be, and that wind whips around you. It is a well-done system that really does work to surround you in the sonic envelope of a storm, and 
really does continue to remind you that you're basically in a well-shaped bucket that has a bunch of holes in it. Music. So this is pretty good for the few times it plays. Light atmospheric tracks for the most part. And then when you come near a location, there's this big thunderous horns and percussion alert that here there be monsters. Overall, though, the part is nice that you hear, but it is also, just like the rest of the presentation, incredibly lean, leaving the game with very little overall music or incredibly thin atmospheric tones for some locations if it is plain. I have to say there is nothing more enjoyable than sailing a sinking ship into the abyss as some cackling football player-sized pirate to your right is squeezing an accordion like a seventh grader's teddy bear. It is excellently done, and I loved when everybody could get together and do that. Once again, though, once you've done it once, well, you've pretty much done it every single time. Voice. Barely any, and honestly, not well done at all. In fact, it's pretty disappointing. I mean, come on, there's a job everywhere in every company that's going to use voice when a person's responsibility is to try to fit people into the roles that look like the game character. Except apparently a rare where they just use a Sudoku puzzle and fill it out with names of coworkers and boom, once you get a chance, you're in. But that's a thing. In voice work, no, not everyone should get a chance. It's like everybody can't run in a beauty contest. But here is why. There isn't any good voices here. There's not a single one that fits the characters. And they are not processed well either. Here's the thing. Many games have to really combine the spirit of their feeling of whatever fiction they're getting into. In this case, Pirates. You have Ron Gilbert's excellent pirate series. Of course, I don't even need to name the name, but we all know what it is. And of course, for cinema, you have Pirates of the Caribbean. But here, we don't really feel that in anything. The sound, the music, or the voice when it comes to the audio. There isn't a feeling of understanding where they are. Understanding that it's this fantasy place where pirates are going to be dueling off with one another with old guns that barely ever work or scimitars. Instead, you just get a person talking to you from a studio. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Except here, there really isn't a story. Rare doesn't go out of their way to tell you much of anything. You're a pirate and you pick your general look and then they throw you onto an island to get jobs from one of a number of suppliers, starting out with lower level quests that cost nothing to higher level quests that see a little nice risk versus reward system playing out. The issue here is this. Most sandbox games have at least a little bit of complexity, and there is almost nothing going on right now in Sea of Thieves. You basically go get some quests where you might be killing one skeleton, or two, or finding a third skeleton and killing it, or finding chickens to deliver someone's home for mysterious reasons, or digging up treasure. And of course, while doing this, you go up reputation points, which then give you better contracts for the different groups. But what are those new contracts? Well, they're the exact same ones as the old contracts, only usually they're multiples. So instead of one or two skeletons, it's two or four. And it's finding multiple chickens or finding a pig. And instead of, of course, digging up treasure, you end up digging up two treasures. Luckily, while it might sound all bad, it isn't. Sailing is pretty enjoyable in the game. And while you do get a solo handling smaller ship if you want, Handling the sails and the anchor and the angle and planning everything together is, of course, the best with friends. Now, jumping in on the Xbox is easy. It worked every single time. Jumping in on the PC requires a little bit of finagling from some people because it just doesn't seem to really want to connect with everybody in a party very often. There's a lot of complaints about that. Rare is looking at it, so they're the ones admitting it's happening. We'll hope that they can get that fixed. Once you decide to get a group together or you're by yourself, you go to the captain's table. You throw down a job you want to do, and then you vote on that job. Once all that's done, you get a map in your inventory that highlights the different locations you need to go or islands that you're headed to. And then using the compass, the map table in the game and various landmarks, you need to sail there and perform the quests all the while watching out for other players. And really sailing on those bigger ships is a blast as they do require smarter use of the sails because if you don't furl those things when they need to be, your ship can smash into the beach requiring you to go down into the depths of the USS never is going to see success and patch it up with planks and pail out the water. Much has been said about the fighting of others in the game or the PvP element, as maybe saving the game from the PvE leanness that it feels now. But honestly, it's just so minute. It is true that smart quick drop into the anchor can turn an enemy's perfect cannon shot into a hilarious flight of the Valkyries as it suddenly makes them look like they're shooting at the moon. Overall, it's just not very deep, and while you can chat and dance and emote and explore together, in the end, there just isn't much there to do because there isn't much discovery in a game, sort of, about discovery. It wears thin precariously fast, and the promise of new items doesn't really do anything to keep you playing. Oh great, a metal bucket or one with a pearl handle. But literally, nothing works in the game world to keep you playing. It's threadbare without the actual promise of something more complex or interesting to do. I think that's the thing about most sandbox titles. There is a complexity in many of them to keep the gamer understanding and feeling like there's going to be a continued sense of discovery. 
here. After you discover enough, it's not a sense of new discovery. It's a sense of itemized discovery. It's a sense of suddenly magically realizing that nothing really does anything better in the game. It just changes its cosmetic look. And of course, this being a game where most of your time is spent in first person, that doesn't seem to matter as much to a lot of people. In the end, I guess I'll just say this. Rare says they have a plan to add more content, but that's a little bit like saying Cupid wears diapers because he keeps shitting himself. You're still left with the end result, which is right now they're asking for a certain amount of money, either $10 from Game Pass or $60 as a new title. But there is very little for continued experience here. And I'll admit, up front at first with a couple friends, it can be really enjoyable, but that wore thin incredibly quick. Fun factor. This is a game that right now at least doesn't really work very well to cycle you through wanting to continue to enjoy it. I am not saying I didn't have fun. I did at times playing with different people from different areas and thanks to all the New Zealanders who popped in early with me. In many ways, Sea of Thieves feels like an interactive front end for Connect designers. It's not that it couldn't have been something special, but the devs have said that they don't really have a big roadmap for upcoming changes, leaving most players in a sea of lost hopes, realizing that no matter how many small towns with only five people in them that Rare throws at us, it's never going to actually feel like a party. So as you guys know, I rate games like this on a buy right now or wait kind of scale, especially in a game that is this new, and I have to say this is easily a wait for a long time, most likely. There has not been a lot of open communication from Rare about their big plans in the future. There isn't a lot here, and as a huge lover of sandbox games, this is one of the few times where I looked and realized that the sandbox was like one foot by one foot. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. If you want to be a patron for me, that's where you can go. It helps me continue to give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.